Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Carmena Malonso and I'm gonna present the work that I did with Nikolai Menmi and James Anderson on explicit distributed and localized model epileptic control via system level synthesis. In my previous talk on distributed and localized model epileptic control, I discussed how useful model epileptic control had been for a variety of industrial applications. And we saw how all those applications can be seen as a plant that is trying to solve this optimal control problem that has this mathematical formulation. We also saw that the idea under model predictive control was to measure the state of the plant and use it as the initial condition for the optimal control problem. And the solution of this optimal control problem was a sequence of inputs, but we only apply the first one. And we repeat this process every time step. And that was how I drew it, but this is in reality what it looks like. We measure the state of the plant and we wait for a while until the solution is computed. And then once it's computed, we go ahead and apply it to the plant. And when it comes to real applications, some of them have slower processes, so it's okay for them to wait until the solution is computed. But some others have faster time scales, so we need faster solutions. And here is where explicit MPC comes into play, because it splits the MPC problem into two parts. It is based on the observation that in the optimal control problem, the only thing that changes every iteration is the initial condition. So we can see this optimal control problem as an implicit map between the initial condition and the control input. So the idea is to make this map explicit. It has been shown that for quadratic programs, the control input is a piecewise affine function of the initial condition. So offline, we can solve the region identification problem, meaning computing the different regions for the different pieces of the control input. This is usually computationally expensive, but that's okay because all the computation occurs offline. And then the online problem just boils down to a point location problem, where we just need to find in which region the initial condition lies and retrieve the input from there. So with this approach, we're effectively moving most of the complexity to an offline problem, so the online problem is simple enough that it can be computed fast. All of these ideas are very well explained on the seminal paper for explicit MPC, and there is a huge body of literature on this topic as well. The reason for that is that explicit MPC has proven to be very effective to deal with fast processes in the industry. However, as I discussed in my earlier talk, these days we're dealing with a different kind of applications, and these are large-scale networks. In those cases, in cases where the plant is a large-scale network, Explicit MPC does not perform as well, because the offline problem usually becomes intractable due to a large number of regions, and even if we were able to compute all those regions, the point location problem is computationally really expensive. So what people have been doing instead is to use distributed MPC approaches and try to apply some of the ideas from explicit MPC to them. These approaches, although they work well for specific applications, they have some limitations. And in particular, they either rely on the heuristics of the specific application or some strong assumptions such as the couple subsystems. They sometimes require a global coordinator and therefore scalability is limited or the solutions provided are suboptimal or approximated. What we propose instead is a distributed and localized explicit MPC where, in general terms, we have each subsystem compute its own regions and uses them online to find its control input. I want to point out that these schemes that we are considering require communication across subsystems and rely on techniques from distributed optimization to solve the synthesis problem. These algorithms are usually iterative, and in particular the one we're using is iterative, and so multiple optimizations are solved per MPC iteration. It is then really important for these cases to have an explicit solution, so that most of the computational burden from having to solve an optimization several times is reduced. We're going to use as a baseline for this work the work that I just presented in my previous talk on distributed and localized closed-loop model predictive control via system-level synthesis. In case anyone is interested in the details, I would like to refer you to watch my previous talk, as well as an extended version of that talk, which you can find in my website. But just as an overview, the problem statement that we had in the setting was we wanted to compute model predictive control for a large-scale network. And since we wanted to preserve the structure of the network, we introduced locality constraints. We wanted to solve this problem in a distributed and localized manner, both in the synthesis, meaning how we solve the mathematical problem in a distributed and localized way, as well as in the implementation, meaning how do we design these controllers in a distributed way and with local information only.
The challenging part here is the locality constraints restrict the dependencies of the decision variables, so that this problem, as stated, is hard to solve, and that's why we resorted to the system-level synthesis parameterization. For anyone interested in SLS, I would like to refer you to the system-level synthesis review paper. In this talk, I am going to take for granted most of the details on distributed and localized MPC via SLS, but I would like to encourage anyone who is interested to watch the video of my previous talk. And as we saw in the previous talk, if we transform this problem into an SLS problem, this is what we get. And again, I'm not going to go into the details, but essentially we achieved a distributed and localized implementation just by using the SLS parameterization together with locality constraints, which can be very transparently imposed. And also, we came up with an algorithm based on ADMM to compute phi x and phi u in a distributed and localized way, meaning a distributed and localized synthesis. And since in this work we're interested in the synthesis, let's review a little what we did with the synthesis problem. So we started with this optimization problem, and we made the change of variables so we can write the optimization in a more compact way. And we also introduced the assumption that the costs and the constraints introduce no coupling. And that means that if I'm the green subsystem in this network, my costs and my constraints can only depend on my state and my input, but no one else is in the network given this separability structure for the cost function and the constraints. And under those assumptions, we found some separability structure that we could exploit using the alternating direction method of the multipliers, or ADMM, which allowed us to distribute the optimization. And we came up with an algorithm to perform this optimization in a distributed way with local information only. And let me illustrate this algorithm in this three-node network. Where, due to the locality constraints, if I'm the blue subsystem, I don't care what the orange subsystem is doing, and I can only communicate with my neighbor, in this case the green subsystem. And we can focus on what the blue subsystem is doing. We split this problem into row-wise computations and column-wise computations for this matrix phi, and so we started with the row-wise computations, and as the blue subsystem, we're only going to solve for the first row of phi, and this is the problem that we're going to solve for. Notice that we require an information collection step at the beginning of the algorithm to know what the initial condition was for our neighbors. Once we have computed the row, we can exchange information with the neighbors to receive the components of the column. We can now compute the column-wise part, and as the blue subsystem, we will need to compute the first column of C. We will use the information that we just received, and the computation in closed form will look like this. Once again, we need to share information with the neighbors, this time to receive information about the rows. Lastly, we perform the ADMM update, and we keep iterating until convergence. And this is the distributed and localized synthesis that we proposed. Notice that I just illustrated it with a row and a column per subsystem, but there is usually a set of rows that a subsystem needs to solve for, and the size of this set depends on the time horizon and the dimension of the subsystem. But in any case, given the row-wise separability, each subsystem can solve for its rows in series. Let me just point out here that these are the computations that the blue subsystem is performing, and they are of a much smaller dimension than the dimension of the entire system, just because locality constraints imply a much more reduced number of variables. So now let's study the complexity of these computational steps, because even though they are of small dimension, we still have some room for improvement. And as you can see, the last two computational steps can be solved in closed form, but the first one needs a solver. And so the question for us was, can we find an explicit solution to solve this optimization problem explicitly? So let's go ahead and study this optimization more in depth, and we focus on the case when we have a quadratic cost and safety and saturation constraints. And if we rate this in SLS variables, this is what we get for the cost, and this is what we get for the constraints. And for the local cost and constraints, this is what we get for the cost, because since the phi is a vector, we get this inner product for our cost, and for the constraints, we just get an upper bound and a lower bound. And by the following lemma, the solution can be found in an explicit way, where we only split the space into three regions. The proof of this lemma can be found in the paper, and it simply relies on the KKT conditions and some algebra. But perhaps more interesting is to analyze the implications of this lemma into this MPC setting. So by using this lemma into the algorithm that we had, the first step just becomes a simple evaluation of a piecewise function. And let us see how this plays out in the actual MPC controller synthesis. So if we were performing the synthesis algorithm in this subsystem, and we were using the explicit solution that we found for the optimization problem, the solution in this case is not affined with the initial condition as it was in the standard explicit MPC. 
But once we know the initial condition, these terms can be computed, and so this expression becomes an affine expression of the ADMM variables, which changes several times every MPC iteration. So now if we look all the way to the left, we will see that we're measuring the state. And since this is our initial condition in the synthesis problem, we can compute the different regions for the ADMM variables. Now we start with the ADMM iterations and we find where phi lies for the first iteration. We perform another ADMM iteration and we find where it lies, and we keep going until the ADMM converges. And when it has converged, we now know where the value of phi is, so by a simple matrix multiplication we can compute the value of u. Now, once again, we measure what the state of the input is and we need to recompute the regions. And again, for the first ADMM iteration, phi lies there, but as we perform iterations, we keep finding the new point and the region where it lies. And in this case, once the ADMM iteration is completed, we find that phi lies in the green region and we can compute the input. So we are effectively moving most of the complexity to the beginning of the ADMM algorithm so that we reduce the complexity of each ADMM iteration. And this is important because we need to perform many ADMM iterations before convergence. And just to illustrate the impact of this reduction in complexity, we performed some simulation experiments. We took the exact same simulations as we used for the distributed and localized MPC work that I just presented. And turns out that the scenario that needed a solver could be solved with the explicit solution that we just developed. And if we look at the runtime per MPC iteration, normalized per states in the subsystem, we see that not only it doesn't increase with the size of the network, which is something that we already saw in the previous presentation, but it's also much faster than the solver and it's almost as fast as a closed form solution. And just to recap, the principle under explicit MPC is that we're able to move most of the complexity offline. In our case, unfortunately, we cannot move most of the complexity offline because the subsystems need to constantly exchange information. But instead of having the synthesis algorithm, we propose something of this sort, where we perform the point location problem within the ADMM, and the region identification problem we only solve once per MPC iteration. Notice that this is simple to solve since we only have three regions for each row of phi. As we saw in simulation, this greatly reduces runtime. Not only that, but the fact that we don't need an optimization solver allows us to perform a parallel implementation of this algorithm in the GPU, which is something that I am working on. And that could further lead to the development of softwares for predicting behavior of large-scale networks, as for example bacterial metabolism, which is something that I am currently working on too. If anyone is interested in more details, I encourage you to read the extended version of this paper that's on the archive, and also the paper that's the baseline for this work, which you can also find in the archive. And feel free to check out more videos about this topic in my personal website. Thank you so much for listening!